let's discuss the idea of the complex Fourier series. So consider a Fourier series f of x is equal to x with a period of 2 pi and repeating. So we can write a Fourier series for this function as a sum n equal 1 to infinity of a coefficient minus 2 over n times negative 1 to the n sine of nx. Let's write that out term by term. So that's 2 sine of x minus sine of 2x plus 2 thirds sine of 3x plus etc. Okay, so we want to write this using complex exponentials. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use Euler's formula to rewrite this. So Euler's formula, remember, sine of x is 1 over 2i e to the ix minus e to the minus ix. So we're going to insert this into our expression for the signs to rewrite this. So now we're going to write f of x as 2 over 2i, and sine of x is e to the ix minus e to the minus ix. Then 1 over 2i e to the minus, here e to the i2x minus e to the minus i2x for sine of 2x, and so on for sine of 3x, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We could keep going. Okay, and so let me just multiply this out. So I have 1 over i e to the ix minus 1 over i e to the minus ix, um, and so on and so forth for e to the 2ix and e to the minus 2ix. So I have various coefficients on these complex exponential terms. Let me write this in a more abstract way. I could write that as c1, some coefficient c1, times e to the ix, c minus 1, e to the minus ix, c2, e to the 2ix, c minus 2, e to the minus 2ix, and you see the pattern. And so I can read off the coefficients from uh, of these complex exponentials from my ex expansion above. And so we can write, in general, f of x as a sum over complex exponentials instead of just sines and cosines. And so, in particular, I could write it as, say, f of x is the sum over n of c sub n e to the i n x. Now, notice here n is a sum over negative infinity to infinity. So we need the negative integers as well. And actually, we also need n equal to 0. So n equal to 0 is included in the sum 2. OK, so uh, as an example, for our function that we had above, f of x is x with a period of 2 pi, we can write the coefficients, the c sub n, uh, in general, is minus, minus 1 to the n over i n. If n is not equal to 0, and it's actually 0 if n is equal to 0. Don't forget that n equal to 0 term. OK, so why would you ever want to write things in terms of complex exponentials? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One is many functions in physics are actually complex. Namely, they use complex numbers. So this could be, say, current. If you study current in electricity, uh, electromagnetic waves are easily represented in complex notation. And quantum wave functions are necessarily complex. Uh, another reason is, believe it or not, um, it turns out that complex exponentials can actually be easier to work with. Why is this? Uh, well, one reason is that you don't really need to separate um, the a sub n, the a0, the bn, compute all these different integrals. All you need is just one set of coefficients, the c sub n's. OK, so how do we compute these c sub n's, these coefficients of the complex exponentials? So let's just recall orthogonality from a previous video. Uh, orthogonality is that the integral from negative pi to pi, cosine of nx, cosine of mx dx, is equal to either pi if n is equal to m, or 0 if n is not equal to m. So we use this when we have a function that's expanded in terms of cosines, say a cosine Fourier series expansion, we can use this orthogonality to solve for the a sub n's. So we multiply both sides by cosine of mx and integrated from negative pi to pi. And in the details of that video, the right-hand side simplified. The left-hand side was just f of x cosine of mx dx. And the right-hand side was just a sub m times pi. 
which allowed us to solve for the a sub m, the coefficients. So is there something similar we can do for the complex exponentials? Are the e to the i n x orthogonal? Well, let's calculate an integral to see. So the integral we need to calculate is integral from negative pi to pi e to the i n x e to the minus m x dx. I can combine my exponentials to make this a little bit simpler. And then I have to consider two cases. So the first case is when n is not equal to m. And so I get a 1 over i n minus m and these exponential factors. Again, that's for n not equal to m. And I get 2 pi if n happens to be equal to m. Let's look at the n not equal to m case. So let's call n minus m some other integer k. It's just some, some integer. And you should convince yourself that e to the i k pi is the same as e to the minus i k pi. If you think about that a little bit on the complex plane, it will make sense for an integer k. Uh, and so then these two terms cancel, so I get 0 if n is not equal to m, or 2 pi if n is equal to m. Or I can write that as 2 pi delta m n. So it turns out that the complex exponentials are orthogonal in very much the same way that the cosine functions were orthogonal. OK, so let's use this to find the c sub n coefficients of the complex Fourier series. So again, we're going to write f of x as a sum over all positive and negative n's, c sub n e to the i n x. So we're going to integrate from negative pi to pi and multiply both sides by e to the minus m x, e to the minus i m x. The sum over the c sub n's, we can pull out of the integral. And so then we have our sum of the c sub n's, integral from negative pi to pi, this integral that we actually just computed above. And so we found that this integral was 2 pi delta m n. And so then we get a sum over all n, c sub n, 2 pi delta mn. Now remember the delta mn only picks out the value when n happens to be equal to m. So from this infinite sum you only get one value when n is equal to m. So we get 2 pi c sub m. The left hand side, side is still the same, f of x e to the minus i m x dx. So now we have a way to compute the c sub n. Take 1 over 2 pi and then take the integral of f of x e to the minus i n x dx. So if somebody gives you a function f of x, this is how you would compute those coefficients, c sub n. Note, again, that there's really only one integral that we need to do for the complex Fourier series, instead of, say, three in general for the real Fourier series, for the constant, the sines, and the cosines. Let's look at an example. Again, this function f of x is equal to x, uh, which repeats every 2 pi. So this is the function that we had at the beginning of the video. Let me quickly sketch it. So it's linear, it repeats every 2 pi. We already know the value, but let's compute this using our integral. So it's integral of x e to the minus i n x dx. Now to do this integral, you really need to integrate by parts. I'm just going to spare you the details. Um, but what I get then, it depends on uh, which case I consider, if n is equal to 0 or not equal to 0. If n is not equal to 0, I get minus 1 over i n, e to the i n pi, and I get 0 if n is equal to 0. e to the i n pi I can write as minus 1 to the n, and so I get the c sub n's that I actually wrote at the beginning of the video. So my Fourier series, my complex Fourier series for f of x, is a sum from n from negative infinity to infinity, but not including 0, of minus minus 1 to the n over i n, e to the i n x. And so this is a complex Fourier series of this function.